Hey guys, welcome to Talking Strongman. Today's guest is British strongman sensation, the one and only 2019 Britain's Strongest Man and the current Cross Federation powerlifting record holder for the UK. Hixie, how are you doing, buddy? That's quite a nice powerlifting title. I didn't know even know I had one. So yeah. I got all sorts of titles. Like I'll big you up as much as you like, mate. <laughs> I'm really good, actually. Uh, probably the best I've been since this whole bicep tear right now. Uh, things are really looking up for me now. So uh, spirits are high. Um, hopefully it'll continue. Good to hear, mate. This is Hixie with, with high spirits and feeling good. You're not you're not one for a huge amount of mo- emotion, are you? Yeah. No, no. I'm. I've always been very chilled out. Um, like I always used to think, like when I when I won the British, I'd probably break down and cry. But I held it together then as well, you know. But yeah, I just like to be, try and be quiet and just uh, not like get too emotional about anything, really. You're you're one of the strongest men on the planet. I mean, when it comes to like static strength, I, I've always said I was having this sh- uh, chat with Terry and um, Bish the other day. I think when it comes to like a, an overhead, a bench, a squat, and a deadlift. There's not many people on the planet that can match you when it comes to, to like power on, on those four events. When did that happen? I, I think just... I, never knew, I was never known for being strongly strong. And, um, well, it's that's... kind of strange. I, I was at Worlds, and he won't mind me saying it because he actually did something. It's done me a favour, but Bobby Thompson says to me, he goes, me and you, we're not really known for moving events, are we? And I were like, what? <laughs> when did that ever become me? You know, I was like, that's all I used to be known for. Now I'm just known as the strong, strong static log lifter. And uh, yeah, and, and it actually made me think, like, when I come back from Wales, I'm going to change that. Um, and obviously the biceps thing is, is made it a bit harder. But yeah, that was that was a thing. I was like, well, since when have I known to just don't want to be good at, at lifting things stood still? I think you I think the powerlifting probably did that a lot of that really. I think so. I think you think when you look at your career, obviously you started at under 105, so you were fast, fit, but you you were always a good log presser. That was always kind of you know if Hicks is turning up to a comp, he's coming there to smash the log, and then you got bigger and bigger, and you still you move pretty well. But then you sort of you just I mean you ended up being over 160 kilos, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, one one sixty eight was my heaviest. One sixty eight yeah. from under one hundred and five, fit, handsome Hixie to yeah. you know the beast that you became. It's in the picture in here. There's no, there's no pictures in here. We'll we'll chuck house where it's like. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Do you sort of recognise yourself from back then? Yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, it's just weird. I think I had to think I. I developed later in life, you know, when, when I was 25, I was only hundred kilos and I was still playing football. I was too heavy to play football, but I played football. Um, and then just stopped and started doing strongman. And, you know, a lot of people said to me, Oh, how did you get so big? You know, like I've got clients that are just, I've really had to, to sort the diets out because I've got one client who's, who's having, uh, a 1,500 calorie shake for breakfast and he's having a full, full cheesecake before bed. And, you know, if he's watching, you know, like I hope he doesn't mind me saying, but, you know, that isn't the way forward. And uh, he's not strong enough to even justify that kind of eating. Um, and, and that eating has never been a thing for me. I've always I've always not eaten a massive amount of food and it's just, it's just progressively taking time and, I remember when I was I hit like 130 for the first time. I felt terrible. Yeah. And then 140 was the same, and uh, even 150, I felt I felt really out of shape. Um, but probably the worst out of shape was probably 168. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was only just slightly lighter than that at Europe's. Um, right. Yeah, and, and it was that it, I told myself I'll do the full show to sort of give myself a kick up the ass to sort it out. Um, and then I came back and I did, you know, I like dropped, I think I was 155, 156 going into Worlds. Um, and it, even like I even I hurt my calf, I still stuck at the diet, trying to get on the cross trainer, just trying to get my weight down and be fitter. Um, 
And luckily, like, I haven't got any heavier since. So, um, I mean, we've got the treadmill. We have a treadmill in here, a dining room. Um, Kim, rub, Kim rubs off of me quite well because she gets up in the morning, does 25 minutes. So I go on do 15, 20 minutes after her every morning. Um, and I think it's just works wonders for me because my body's... I'm sat at 155 and I'm in the best 155 shape I've ever, ever been in, so... Um, I remember talking to Zadrunas and he used to kind of purposely get bigger and then drop about five or ten kilos before a show so that he, he'd put that size and strength on and then just before the show drop that weight and suddenly he felt a lot fitter going to be fitter I'm just trying to fall on the side That's right. yeah that makes sense yeah but I mean you, you, you've You've got so much bigger. And I think that's probably why people see you as like a, a static monster. Because, I mean, you just got to look at your numbers. I mean, you, you're so blasé about it. But I sort of scroll through Instagram and see your list. What was it? 390 the other day on the axle for, for an yeah. easy double or something like that. You know, you, you would... to me, it's just not a big deal. But then to other people, it is. But I guess, you know, when there's, there's been 500 kilo deadlifts done out there, and it just doesn't seem special to me. Um, and I know it's on an axle. I even, I even asked Colin, you know, what's the world record on an axle from nine inch? Because that's something you could throw in a show, you know, because you can't keep chasing 500s because, you know, it's just, it's, it's not like it's not going to happen, but it's a bit anticlimax at all every year if, if we're going to have a world deadlift chance and no one's anywhere near it. <laughs> sure, I, I agree with that. Um, but, you know, I said to him, what's the, what's the record from nine inch? And I said to him, I pulled 4.30 last year, raw, and he was shocked. And I said, well, I'll tell you now, I'll probably pull 4.50 on it this year. Uh, and, he, and he was like flabbergasted. He's like, who on earth does that? <laughs> but he's right. <laughs> it's, it's a ridiculous weight, particularly for anyone that's never lifted on an axle. It is a lot harder. It actually ends up being a slight deficit to a standard deadlift because of the yeah, thickness. I've often wanted to draw a diagram in this because um, how could you do it? Like, here's a good example, a really good example. So there's your normal bar thickness. Now we do it, there's a camera. And then there's your actual bar thickness. Yeah. So when your hand's on that bar, we, we all know when we deadlift and we deadlift with straps, the bar sits in our fingers. Yeah. But we already take like an inch to two inch off that bar. So our start position's higher. Whereas with the axle, your hands are always around, right on the front of the bar. So you, you're already at a deficit compared to a standard height, but you've not got the bar in your fingers either. Yeah. So it, it's actually like, even before the whip comes out the bar, it could be, I was trying to figure it out. It was like a four inch difference why I got the way I got it. And it's not just, it's not just the height. It's also the thickness brings the bar away from you slightly more than a, than a thinner bar. So th there's all these little elements that just people don't often think about that do make the axle so much harder that that's not even going into the flex that you get in, like, say, a deadlift bar. So you don't get that full weight of a deadlift bar, you know, until a couple of inches off the floor. Whereas on the axle, because it doesn't flex, it's literally 400 kilos straight away. And if yeah. you don't have that power off the floor, it's not going anywhere. No, and um, I just think it's very strong, man. I mean, I, I didn't like it when it first came in. I was like, what the hell is this, you know? But it, it's very strong, man. Um, I, if I was running a show and I had big cylinder axle deadlift type piece of equipment, I'd want them in. I wouldn't want to go into the gym, grab a bar and a few plates and make the lads lift on that for the show. It doesn't look as good, does it? So, um, you know, the, it, it look, got a good look element to it, but it's just very strong, man. It's harder. Um, and I think it's cool. So I just train them all the time because I know that they'll appear in the shows. So, so you're deadlifting all the time on an axle right now? Um, well, no. What I'm, what I'm actually doing, I deadlift heavy every two weeks. Um, and then alternate that with a heavy squat. And then later on in the week, I do a speed day. So it's either a speed squat or a speed deadlift. And my speed deadlift now is with a bar. So okay. just to get, because for me, it's getting used to the, like the whip, the movement, because I pull the bar in, the axle rolls differently to a bar. And it's very minor things, but it matters top end, you know, 
Um, so I just make sure I get a little bit of work in on that with my speed days. Uh, and then should I get a deadlift bar in a contest, hopefully my crossover will be good. You'd you think I would lift more. <laughs> so One thing I love talking, you know, we, we, we chat quite regularly. And one thing that really comes across well with you, with your own training and your coaching and stuff like that, and it's something I, I like to do, is you keep it very basic. It's okay. mine, mine is so basic and it worries me because, you know, like, it almost comes across boring. Um, and, you know, I always store things in that, that try and not make it boring for people to try and keep them interested. But I try and make sure it still has a basic element to it because you just don't need complicated training. And I've always found to get stronger, I just really need a really basic and simple plan. Um, and I know mine now and it works really well. I mean, I, I can't train three, four days a week heavy. I just can't. Yeah. Um, whether it's just because I don't sleep enough, whether it's my age. Um, but, you know, like I'll train heavy-ish overhead on a Monday and then I'll do my heavy day with stones on a Tuesday and then the rest of the week, wherever I train, it won't be that heavy. Well, tell a lie, my incline bench might be a bit heavy, but, you know, I'm sat down so I can, I can get away with that. You've been lazy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I do like yolks, I do farmers, um, and I just try and, and dumbbell. I'm just trying to keep things light, try and do more reps and, and not knacking myself out. How many times a week are you training at the moment? Four, but I'm, I'm pretty much ticking nearly every event box off I can think of. So you're really just trying to focus on all the basics for strongman, yeah. squatting, deadlifting, pressing. Well, done. <laughs> so event- this week, this week I will have trained um, Hercules hold, farmers, deadlift, squat, log, stones, sandbags, yoke, sack toss, and have I missed anything? I think that's it. <laughs> Wait, you sound you sound like a man that is just you. You want to be ready for anything this year. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's nice when like Marcus has been up to visit and he's seen he's seen like how I'm training and I am grafting, but I am being sensible at the same time because I've been having problems with my arm, and then if it's not my arm, I've been having problems with other parts of my body because it just it's just a shock again to my system. Um, even though I've done strongman now eleven years, there's obviously sections of that eleven years where I haven't done all these movements. And like we were talking about the axle, I mean, everyone would think, oh, Graham would be capable of a big axle, but it's getting the axle there. You know, I'm, I'm unflexible, I'm out of practice, um, and I've tried doing that the last couple of weeks, uh, and I've bruised my rib just by, you know, putting the axle there. So you just got to go over, over, the, over all the teething issues that I'm getting at the moment, and, you know, and then I can start saying I'm in really good shape no matter what's ahead. So I think the last couple of years you've proved you're you know you're you're in shape and you're one of the best. Obviously go back to World's Strongest Man last year. You made the final for the first time. How was that feeling? <laughs> it was amazing. I mean I've always had I've had a, a few there's a few things I wanted to tick off as a strong man, you know, wind grits, um log lift world record hopefully. And, and make the final world strongest man. Um, I always wanted to podium at Europe, so I've already done that, but I want to do it again. Um, yeah, so so when I done that, I, I was over the moon, and then like it just sort of took like a, a pressure off me because I think I knew and everyone knew that I should have made the final at some point, but um, I just always had an event at Worlds I was really bad at. Um, I can blame my height, but. It's not always that. It's just something I'd never trained. You know, like um, 2018, it was truck pull. Had I not finished last on truck pull, um, I probably had a very good chance of winning my group. Um, it just made everything else harder. Uh, then I've had fingers, fingers before. Um, it's, it's just always been something where I've just been stuffed a little bit with with an event. And when it's that tightly contested, it's hard to to get through. Um, but with the format this year, I had a plan anyway. It was to win squat, win log, and then go to the stone off. Um, 
I knew that with my calf injury, I would be struggling to do truck pull and I would be struggling to do loading race. So um, truck pull got changed and ended up farmers, which didn't really help me because <laughs> uh, I'd not trained that either. But, you know, um, the, the plan really was that and, and it was nice that the plan paid off. I mean, Stones felt really quite hard, actually, because I'd done nine reps on the log. And we'd been there from, from 6.30 in the morning, my heat. had been there for 6.30 in the morning. Uh, and I did stones at 8 o'clock at night. I've been there myself where you sort of turn up 8, 9 o'clock in the morning mm. and you're doing a, your second event, you know, late in the evening. You've not eaten properly. You, you can't warm up properly. It's, it's a real tough thing to cope with. I mean, the mad thing was, I mean, I even sit back and think about it. I mean, I had log. And I had to beat the Iceland guy at log. And uh, I was worried. <laughs> and yeah. like, Luke Richardson was like, why are you worried? I went, I don't know how many he's going to do. He went, nobody in this room can beat you at this log if you want to do 100% all out. And I was yeah. just I was sat there like, I don't know, just got like this little parrot on the shoulder and I was worried that I'd, that I'd mess it up. Um but obviously, when I got out there, I did first rep. I was like, I all that just went away, and I just cracked on doing what I do best. Um, I just didn't know how many to do because <laughs> I, I I felt it, you know. After the night, you know, when we went and sat down and we cooled down and everything else, I got quite tight. Mm -hmm. um, so when we had to go up and do stones again, it, you know, like we didn't didn't warm up for anything. We didn't have any warm up stones to use. Uh, I felt like the stones were pretty hard and. When I'd done my run, I wasn't very happy with it. And um, I was the first out, so the stones were a little bit dirty, a little bit dusty. Um, they were hard. And watching, watching back, you know, from back home, it looked like it was a hard set of stones because yeah. I know you're capable of smashing out all those stones easy on a good day. But ev everyone seemed to be struggling. So I think, yeah. um, you know, when you're a fan watching... It went on... I think that the stone runs got better. I know maybe the caliber were better, but the, the earlier stones especially, it was noticeable that they got better as well. But I'd done the six and I just I just didn't know it, it was enough. I was like, I don't think it's enough. You know, just but then he come out and was just nowhere near. So it's quite funny actually. He says to me, You're not a very good stone lifter, are you? I went, <laughs> No. <laughs> and then Luke is like, why are you telling him you figured out? I said, just let him think I'm a bad stone with the, um, I've, I've, I've watched you with that stone of steel that you've got in your gym. You're, um, I've sold that, man. Have you? Yeah, yeah, well, it never got used. And, you know, I've got loads of stones. Um, and the stone of steel were good, actually, because it meant you learn to, to clamp onto the stone, um, which I probably don't do enough of with the Atlas stones. Um, but I just thought, what what better would you rather use Atlas stones with tacky like in a show, or would you use a stone of steel that you'll never use in a comp in your life? So, yeah. um, just made the decision to get rid of it and make sure I go and train stones um, week now. So you make the final, first time ever. You you're happy, and then obviously first event disaster strikes. Just my luck in it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think Liz said it in, 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 in your interview. I don't have much luck at Worlds, or maybe you said it. Uh, but it's always been me. I never have any luck at Worlds. It's not been your competition, to be fair, has it? No. Yes. no. And I thought my luck had changed. You know, I made final. I wasn't really scared of any events. Um, I hadn't trained any yolk. Uh, I don't want to keep using the excuse. I was injured. But I, didn't, I hadn't trained in a yoke. And, you know, like yoke for me, I'm like you, you know, I, I believe if I've, if I've done enough, I'm one of the best in the world. Mm. Um, but I hadn't trained it and we were warming up with it and it just felt a bit crap. Um, but I don't know if it was the anvil that did it. I, I didn't feel anything, but threw the anvil down and got under the yoke. And I remember I rushed to pick up and just hadn't got it right. So I'm trying to adjust with it on my back and then I just felt like a little pop in my arm and then there was a delay and then there was like multiple pops boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. and then it, I realised what had happened so I put it down looked over and I just seen that it moved up and it was just like 
oh, you mean you know yourself? It's just a, it's just the world comes crashing down. I've gone from like up here to down here. Um, and the mad thing for me was my phone, like on Friday, I had loads of good luck messages. And then Saturday morning, loads of congratulation messages. And Saturday night, loads of hope you're okay messages. And then Sunday, loads of birthday messages. <laughs> and uh, I was, I was, uh, oh man, I did something awful and it, it still haunts me today. I mean, I was sat in the hotel lobby and um, some flowers came. They're not balloons came, sorry, and they were at the desk. Happy birthday written on it. And I was like, I thought it was, you know, because you had all the runaround girls. Um, and they were all saying, Oh, it's your birthday, we'll get you something. And I was like, Don't get me anything. Don't I don't want anything. You know, my wife's not here, so I'm not celebrating it with anybody. Yeah. Uh, and I left these balloons there. And I remember being on the phone to Kim and I was like, it's fucking balloons there. Walking past it and going out to reception and they tried to come and get me at the reception. I just ignored them. Um, and then we sat down on Saturday night at the bar. And I, I can't remember who it, who it was who went and got it. It might have been Pa. But someone went over and get it. There was a cake and then there was, a, there was the balloons. And I just thought it was all the IMG girls or whatever, and the fucking, it was Kim that sent it, sent it me with a card, and I was just like, oh, my God, I felt so bad. Did you get an earful when you got home for that? <laughs> no, I actually understood, you know, I just, yeah. I wasn't interested. I just didn't want anyone to make a deal of me. I just wanted to go home, um, you know, like, and I was on medication, so I was just doped out anyway. I thought, I just want to be doped out at home. I don't want to be here. Um, unless you've sort of experienced that situation of you know you you give your all to to be there you, i mean not just and i'm not talking just a few months training for worlds your whole life you've been working to be the best strong man that you can be yeah. you know and then you finally make that final and then you know good events for you in the final as well to be fair there yeah, was. yeah we were you, know, you, yeah. you you had a legitimate shot at a podium and yeah then for that to happen it is devastating I've, I've obviously been there before and you sometimes do just need a day or two just to yourself just to sulk yeah. <laughs> and get over it I get home so to the family the, the sulk lasted ages um you know it's it, it's been really tough and like it was just so down and it's it's difficult because i'm in a house with with uh, you know my wife and three other kids uh, you bring the house down and I, I don't want to do that. I've got no intention of doing that at all. Um, but it's just it's just awful. And like um, even like picking my daughter up, I couldn't do it comfortably for a few weeks. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to. But then how do you say no? You know, I can't say no when she stood there at arm with me. Um, and it made me question like, do I want to do this anymore if this is what I'm not able to do? If I'm not able to be a dad for five minutes, then what's the point in doing this? Um, it, it took me a while to get over that actually um, I got back training and I've been questioning myself for a while do I still want to do it can I still do it because <laughs> you know like I've been really struggling with quite a few things um, pressing being the biggest I mean I did a 170 log this week and it felt hard <laughs> it felt really hard um, just the press yeah. but you know I, I and then I just, I don't know, something's gone off in my head. You know what? Yeah, let's get in the best shape I've ever been in. Let's just get as strong as I've ever been again, you know. Um, Do you find Kim's good for sort of giving you a kick up the backside, just telling you to get on with it sometimes? Yes, man. She says it how it is. And even if I don't want to listen, like if I'm not listening at all, she's always right. They often always are. Um, but, you know, like... You she trains to tell them that. <laughs> yeah. She trains so hard, I mean. We've got a quite a nice little triangle going on at the minute. I've got a, a, a new lad. He's not new, but he trains with us in the gym now. Um, he tries and works his work shift around training with me and Kim. Um, and we just push each other. And, like, Kim trains very hard. Um, I mean, I don't coach her anymore. But and, and then actually, the way she trains is no, nothing like I used to coach her. You know, but she, she just gives it 110% all the time. It doesn't matter how tired she is. Um, he just goes for it and he rubs off you know like 
but I like to think like the days that she struggles, I try and help her lift her, lift herself up as well. Um, it just works well. And I just think for me this year, whatever happens, I've got everything ahead of me to be the best I can be this year. Um, I'm always busy. I always have been busy, whether it's work, whatever. I'm always busy. Um, but I always say, like, if I was a full-time strongman and didn't have anything to do, I'd probably just get fat. <laughs> Saying to someone the other day, I mean, obviously, I did strongman full-time for a while. And, like, once I stopped, you know, I became super busy, like just a workaholic now. But I realised I could actually do this and do strongman at the same time. And it's... You'll probably find you, you enjoy it more because your focus isn't, it's like all your eggs are in one basket, isn't it? They're not like, right, I'm a full-time strongman. I have to be a good strongman because I have to earn a living. Yeah. No, I've never had that thought, ever. Yeah. You know, like, the guys at Bahrain, they probably got great money, and I don't think they're sitting there and think, oh, you know, if X, Y, and Z, I could have been out there and earned this. Might have come last. Well, let's, let's be honest. You know prize money in strongman is never... It's not like some sports where you can win a big event and it's life changing, you know, you can, you can get an okay payday at some of the events now, but there's no life changing money in strongman. Um, so, you know, focusing on work elsewhere and then just doing strongman for you becomes quite a nice feeling. And it's, it's made me even now I'm, I've, I've taken the pressure off myself. I'm not fussed about being, you know, even like you guys trying to battle for Britain's strongest man and stuff. But there's a little kind of niggle in the back of my head saying I wouldn't mind doing one more show. And there's no there's no pressure then as well. I can just enjoy it, train hard and have fun with it, which is a nice feeling. That's the main thing for me this year is is winning that title back again, I think. And um, I just feel like, like you said, one's good, but it's not enough. But it'd be nice to have come away, have all these troubles, have this arm, and come back and still beat all these young lads that everyone else thinks going to win. So, well, um, let's let's talk about Britons because I mean, there's so many good British athletes right now. It's funny. I, I get shit when I kind of do my predictions and stuff from all of you guys. You're pretty good. You're laid back. You take it how it is. But some of the guys get really funny if you have an opinion. But the one thing with strongman is a different set of events. We can all beat each other. Exactly. And exactly. people don't appreciate that sometimes. They're like, oh, there's no way. You know, you change the five events. And it can completely throw results all over the place. I mean, I mean, look at Tom last weekend. I mean, Tom's one of the best strongmen in the world now. Without um, question. But just got a couple of events there that just took points off him. And he doesn't place as well. And even and sometimes you just have a bad it. day as well. Yeah, of course. Of course. We've, we've all had those where you're just not performing at your best. I think if we knew exactly what was going to happen, it'd be bloody boring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But no, you know, you've got, you got the two Stoltmans, you've got young Luke, uh, Bish, hopefully me. Anyway, I'd, I'd say right now, those five are the top five in the country. Yeah. You know, there's, there's up and comers and there's some of the old guys that are still good and have got events they can challenge. But I would say you five right now are the, the guys that are going to be challenging for the title. Yeah, of course. Uh, and I, I've, I think. I, I don't know the events properly yet because Darren's not certified. Them, but, um, well, I can't really talk about it because I don't know the events properly yet. Anyway, they're just rumours. But, you know, like, I think it might be dumbbell medley. Um, but you'll have an axle deadlift maybe. How, but, how, would you, how would you like to do a log for Max with, with Mr. Luke Stoltman? <laughs> right now, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to introduce you as the, the second biggest log presser in the country, but I thought you might just kind of hang up straight away. You know a really funny story, and, and it only took until the last day, and when I was probably an hour or two hours before I left, that I realised this. But my room number at Worlds was 221. <laughs> so I fucking called Colin over, I called Darren over, I called Luke over, and are you all playing a joke on me? And they were like, wow, when my room number's 221. And they all stood there and like, so I went, well, what fucking, what relevance does 221 have to me and to Luke? And they were like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Joke erupted. <laughs> you know, like, we never, we never really spoke about it, but, you know, everyone's got the, 
the sliced opinions on it all, but I don't think it matters because I think both me and Luke are going to beat that in the future anyway. So it's like with the whole Aaron, Aaron's uh, record, you know, like it just got dying out in a comp and then that one gets nullified anyway. So and, uh, probably just, uh, I don't want the British record, I want the world record. And I said that for a while. So The world record's what it's all about. Zadrunas has held that record for so long now. A lot of people have attempted it. Do you reckon you're going to be the man to take it? I, I want to get it, but I want to do a full show at the same time. I just I just think, I don't know. I feel like when I concentrated on it, I got better at it, but then I got worse at it. I feel like the more I did it, the worse I got. Up here, more than physically. Um, and like, you know, I've... I've <sighs> When, when did I do? I've done like two eleven in a show and done the full show, you know. I never really bothered training for Max. I want to start doing that again. I'm going to train log every other week um, and just try and get. I know that when I'm firing hundred percent and I'm strong as I can be, that two thirty is going to be within me. I don't have to focus on it. I just think it'll come. Um, you know, I like like this week. I've, I've showed signs of. I did a two ten incline bench yesterday, which was. Which was all right. And then I thought back, I thought, hang on, I, I don't even know what my best is on this, but it's only about 20 kilos more, maybe 30. And that's on a bar. Yeah. You know, and the axle, there's an element of it spinning in your hands, so you've got to control it more. So I thought, I'm not actually miles off. It's probably just more mentally again. You know, like when I'm on the log or whatever, I'm just getting mentally beaten. I can't do it. Um, but I'm just putting grafting. I'm doing a lot more sets of fives, more sets of threes. And, and just building myself back up. How's the bicep feeling on it? Like cleaning the log and stuff. Oh, yeah. My biceps, hundred hundred percent. It's actually I'm actually getting pain through the elbow. So when I when I do dumbbell or log, I'm getting like a, a tendonitis pain down my elbow. Um, you know the bicep itself's fine. Um, probably strongest it's ever been. I mean I did did stones on Tuesday. I managed to do one sixty for a set of five, and it was fine. So. Um, that's coming on nicely now. Good stuff. So, yeah. World's Strongest Man is set for June. Have you got your sights set on that? Well, I had my call two days ago, and I said I'm going. So you are? I said I'm going, but, um, you know, like, I'm always thoughtful of what's happening in the house, so I don't always try and make that decision without speaking to my wife. But she's as supportive as you can be, um, you know, because she works, we care for her sister. I was just a bit like, you know, what's going to happen there? But then there's, there's a, a long time to go till June. So we've got plenty of time to organise stuff. Um, you know, and she's been on with it. She wants me to go. She's, you know, she's, she never ever says to me, I don't want you to do that. I'm, um, glad, you, I'm glad you're doing it because I know we spoke a week or so ago and you were umming and ahhing. Yeah, well, I, I think, I think the phone call made it real. And then, when I sat and evaluated how my training's going, I thought I'm actually in a really good place. Um, you know, like I'm training everything and I'm managing to train everything and everything's getting a bit better. And, um, you know, like for me to run up and down the gym with even like 150 farmers and not think it's that heavy is a pretty big deal. You know, like, and that's where I'm at at the moment. You know, if that gets any better, then, then fantastic. Excellent. So, I think... Yeah. Um... I don't think you'll, you'll have any shows before that either, will you? Everything sort of afterwards. No, you know? no, everything, everything, yeah. It's, it's a bit crammed, actually, after all. Yeah. I, I was looking, me and Liz did a video recently about the sort of schedule from June onwards, and it's absolutely nuts. There's so many big shows happening. So I, I guess... Think, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is probably Worlds. Um, I'm interested in the Royal Albert Hall one, uh, just for experience. Um, and then Europe's. I've got the Shaw Classic, which is a week before Europe's. Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna look at doing both. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll just treat it so I'll I'll train for the Shaw Classic, and then I'll just have to have a week of of a bit of light training and try and obviously get ready for the week after. I think I think if you're in shape, you can do it. I just don't think you can sustain it for doing it for many more weeks. Yeah. Um, 
So that's what I'll do is them two, and then I won't do anything till the Britons in October. Um, hopefully, we'll get the injuries. <laughs> But we'll that's see. that's, that's <laughs> going to be the the challenge for a lot of people and promoters as well. So I think if even if people don't have invites to certain shows, they should be ready. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, like I won't feel like I'll get injured if I've trained everything. Um, you know, like I want to be whatever f- events you throw at me. I want to be oh, I've trained them. You know, I'm a hundred percent confident in what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and I haven't been in that position for a long time. Even when I won Britons, it, it was I focused on the events of Britons, and I wasn't training anything outside of that. Um, I didn't have time. I was still working full time then, and obviously we had to commute to work and home. Um, so, like now with working from home, and obviously with Jim being around the corner, uh, my training window has grown. So, like I don't have a squished hour and a half to train now. I now it can be two and a half hours and this made a big difference really I mean um, like I was saying earlier I fit all these things in the week um, and the way I rotate it and the way I some, like I'm doing like some weeks light some weeks heavy it's just I'm, I'm training stuff all the time and give me another four to six weeks and I, I really think I'll be in a really good place I look forward to seeing it, mate. You, you, you know, you, you've proven now you're one of the best guys. You just need, I mean, you've won Britons, which I'm sure was a big relief. I know for myself, when I won Britons, it was like, yes, I've made it kind of thing. It's because to, to win your national title is, no one can then take that away from you ever. You know, you can hit all the records. Yeah, it was a big pressure that year because I actually felt really good for winning it the year before. Um, but I was sick the week before Britons. I had food yeah. poisoning. And uh, when I came in, I actually came in at like 137 kilos when I was against Eddie. And I just like kept not messing stuff up, but I was like, one more rep on the deadlift. That's all I needed. And, you know, like fumbled the keg on the loading. Just things weren't aligning. And um, obviously it was Eddie. He was world's strongest man. It was nice to have just been on his tail. But I just thought, I think everyone could see that if I'd done a perfect day, it would have been a problem. Um, I was beating him on the stones and then I've messed up the fourth stone. Um, yeah, it just, it just wasn't meant to be. And uh, when I came in the year after and Kim was pregnant, I thought it, it has to be now. Or if it's not now, then when, I don't know when it'll be because I just I just knew that going forward, I didn't want to uh, commit to any of the shows. So, you know, I, I just throughout the whole day, I was trying to be, right, at this event, we're going to do this. You know, and just trying to set my own goals and my own targets. And I think I'd even had it written on the board, like do eight reps on the log, do 10 reps on the deadlift, um, place top six on loading, place top three on stones. You know, I had all these strings and I ticked them all off actually in the show. I did yeah. I did every one that I said I would do. So I sat and reviewed it and thought, right, if, if I do that, I think I'll win. Yeah. And it, and it just worked out like that. Um, so yeah massive pressure off and, and like you say we're, we're making the world's final it's just it's just took something like a pressure off me even though I feel a bit empty that I didn't actually get to do the show <laughs> and um, the stats there and I, and I made the final so um, so what are the goals then going forward you ticked off all these kind of boxes obviously I know you want to make the final again and, and complete it but what's the the big goals for you moving forwards um, I just want to get some podiums in this year, whatever shows I can do. Um, you know, I don't see why I can't. I just, I've got to like look at, look at myself, even if it just means look at myself on a piece of paper and say, what am I good at? What am I bad at? Um, what can I improve? And I just want to improve everything. You know, like, well, my grip's always been bad, but I never trained it. I never enjoyed training it. I hated it. Uh, I'm training it three times a week now and I'm seeing improvements. So when you see improvements, you think, oh, I'm enjoying it now. And it actually becomes enjoyable. Uh, yeah. You know, like, I'm never going to beat Mark Felix at Hercules Hold. But if I train it twice a week and I go on a show and I still come last, at least I tried. Sure. You know, at least I've gone and put the effort in and I've tried. And if, um, it, if you get an extra two points on an event, 
that makes a big difference overall. This is it, yeah. yeah, this is it. I've kind of tried to leave no stone and turn for myself because, you know, some things just, I haven't trained over years and I've got like a few bit of catching up to do. But at the same time, like, it's all about getting the extra points in the extra seconds. So just making sure I train everything and, and not just concentrate on the good things. You know, like, for me, deadlift was never a, a good event. You know, I never placed highly on a deadlift. Um, go back to 2017, I, I placed bang in the middle of the pack. Uh, 2018 was a side handle deadlift. Um, and only 2019, I started to, like, it was only Bish and Felix that bit, beat me by one and two reps. Um, only then I started to say, actually, I'm, I'm getting good at deadlift now. Um, but now, like, I want to win the deadlifts this year. Did, didn't you, know. you match Bish at Europe's last year? Yeah, yeah. It was it was kind of strange because I was going against Felix and we were the second to last pair out. And then you had Bish and, and Richardson out last. And I thought, I weren't really there to fight for anything. I was just there to just take part, really, and just see where I was. Um, and I thought, if I beat Felix, that gets me third. So... He did three, I did four, and then Kim shouted, just do another one. So I did another one. Uh, and then the next, the, 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 them two came out and just matched how, me and got how, by. How, how heavy was it? It was said to be 350. Um, I it was more than that. Yeah, it looked hard. <laughs> when I was watching people do it. I mean, uh, I mean, big Gavin Park had deadlift over 400. Mm-hmm. They only got one inch. But... Um, yeah, and, and weirdly enough, when I assessed it afterwards, I thought, I could have done seven. <laughs> you know, um, I didn't even have a suit on. Um, and I, and I've, I'm getting comfortable wearing a suit now. So, yeah. um, I, I, you know, I, I think I'm dangerous in that in that area this year. Um, I did 340 for five this week before my 390 for two, and I had probably eight to ten quite comfortably. It's going to be interesting to see what you do. Well, hopefully you get that chance to do a, a Max Axel deadlift at some point. Yeah, it'd be nice. I mean, I don't know. Just try and dangle carrot for Colin. And, <laughs> you know. But it's just different. And, it, you know, it, it there will be a record there to have, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. Have you got any interest in doing any powerlifting still? No. no. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, the interest was there for quite a while, but I think now that like I've made my transition into, into what I want to do and, and I've started training everything again and all the teething niggles are starting to go away. I just want to be money. I think I think in this day and age with so many great talent out there, you need to commit one hundred percent. Yeah. You know, I, I'm pretty convinced if you decided you wanted to do the the powerlifting. Like, like with Thor, like with Eddie, you know, though, you guys are strong enough, but you need maybe two years focused on training for it. It's not going to happen just by clicking the fingers. And likewise, none of the top powerlifters are going to come over and dominate strongman. They're, they're Never, different sports. And at such a high level, you really need to commit 100%. It's movement pattern, isn't it? You've got to get used to the movement patterns. And yeah. I don't bench press. I don't squat with a bar very often. Um, and I don't deadlift without straps. So, um, you know, like, I went in, I, I, I had a, I had a 1,100 in my head. I thought I really wanted to match Thor, um, you know, so I got that done, but my performance on the day could have been better. Um, I surprised myself with the squat. Um, I remember saying to you, I think I, think I could do 440, uh, but I was just... More like smoke and mirrors, just saying, oh, I think you can do 440, but I can't. <laughs> you know? And then I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't know, like it, the whole judging thing kind of irritates me a bit. Um, you know, it's never black and white. It's, you see a video of someone squatting and it looks high, and then you see someone doing a deadlift and it looks hitched. And I don't know. I think, I think people just, I've, I've got a bit lazy with the, the refereeing and it, it don't know, it just made it less appealing for me. I thought when I first started it, I thought, oh, great, you know, there's your rules. That's a lift. That's an all lift. There's no grey area. Sounds good. 
And then I learned it was the complete opposite. This fucking grey areas like this. And, you know, <laughs> uh, it just causes controversy and I can't be asked with it. And then, I'm, you know, like, it's a bit like, uh, if, it, if it, was that locked out or not locked out? Well, if, if there's any question that it wasn't, then it wasn't <laughs> for me. You know, like, if, 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 if one person's questioning it, then there's a reason. Uh, like I know myself, if I lift something and I know 100% that I've done it, then I know I've done it. But if I think, did I get it? Did I get it means I didn't get it. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't question it. Otherwise, of course. You know, so, uh, yeah, I just think at the moment for me, no, power, there's no room for powerlifting for me uh, at the moment. I mean, I might be ashamed to people to listen to that, but... Well, I think for people that want to see you in Strongman, it's not a shame. And I think if you're looking at you know, really defend or because let's be honest, you didn't get a chance to defend the British title. You never lost it. So to see you and Bish head to head and obviously the Stoltmans, Luke Richardson, you know, that guy's improving rapidly, quickly. It's, um, it's going to be exciting. It is. I mean, like even, even like with a deadlift, you wouldn't know who to pick, you know, but I want to be like, don't pick me. But I'm going to win. <laughs> you know, uh, I joked with Richardson on time. You know, we got on really well. Uh, and I've told him, I said, there's two events I'm definitely doing you on. He's like, what are they? I went deadlift and stones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have so, you been able to train with him recently? I haven't, no. He's, uh, he hasn't really left where he is. I think, yeah. I think he's just... It's, diff- it's difficult at the moment, isn't it? But yeah. hopefully I will come up and train with you soon, mate. Um, yeah, and, uh, actual deadlift. Axel deadlift, no problem. I'd rather do that than, than bench with you like last time. <laughs> I've planned a 400 triple in two weeks. So, yeah. I think I think it's if, if I go in and it feels like it did last this week, then, then I've got it, you know. Um, but I always try and not give myself that number until I walk in the gym. I start warming up and I'll be like, right, this is where I'm at today. Because it just I just call it heavy day and it means I do a five, a three and a two. And I just weigh up what I want to do for that day and make it heavy enough that I don't fail anything. Um, and then I move forward from there. So if I do four hundred for three, it means I could do four. That's the plan. <laughs> it's a good way of training I think always feeling like you've got a little bit more in the tank rather than going to that absolute failure point failure yeah. should happen in you know in competition if you're going to go to that absolute limit yeah I mean reps are different you've got to condition yourself to train reps but like yeah when you're with them big numbers you've got to be careful mm. buddy I can't wait to see how you do this year I'm really glad that you're going back to Worlds because I know you weren't sure a couple of weeks back so yeah, I'm never sure what I'm doing. Uh, I just enjoy training. I think uh, it's it's clear to see from the way you're training right now. You 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 don't just want to do one show this year. You want to be ready for everything. Yeah, I do. I want to I want to get involved with them. You know, I've, I've missed them. I, then, I tell you what, it looks like we might be getting some live shows as well. So that would be so cool to yeah. to see some comps again in front of fans and you know that atmosphere. The Giants live guys, the the shows that they do the, in the arenas. I miss those. So. Just having actual <laughs> fans cheering for you, it usually helps you lift a, a little extra as well. Well, it's been it's been uh, two years January since I won, and I haven't really I haven't done a live show since. And I know there hasn't been any, but no. that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be, it'll be two and a half years before I you know I've, I do a next live show, which you know. I'm, and that's why I just want to be in shape because even if it means I just go in and I, I place my pack, I just I just want to go in and take part now. I want to yeah. go in and enjoy myself and be a part of it again. That's good uh, to hear, mate. Yeah. Right. For anyone watching that wants to follow you, if they don't already, where can they find you on social media, buddy? Well, currently my Facebook page is hacked. <laughs> you just recently set up a new one, haven't you? Well, I've been told by somebody that I might be able to get it back. Okay. Um, so I've gone through the guys at Worlds. Um, they might be able to get me my Facebook page back. Cool. Um, yeah, on Instagram, it's just at Graham Hicks uh, UK. Awesome, buddy. Well, hopefully I'll see you soon. Best of luck with everything this year. Guys, make sure you go and follow Hicksy over on Instagram and hopefully on Facebook again soon. Uh, you've got a YouTube page now as well, haven't you? 
Uh, well, I've had a YouTube page for a while. It's just it's difficult to, like you understand, to commit to it to get someone to do all the editing. Um, I've got. I just, I just got the wife to do it. It was easier. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've got someone that's you know it's coming up who's who's committing some time and hopefully we'll get some bits together to to go up there just to keep me active. Um, that's all I want to do really is just keep active it's, it's not about oh, I've, I've eaten 10,000 calories today tomorrow I eat 15 or anything like that I just I just want a bit of footage a bit of a bit of me a bit of me training and uh, just try and keep me active on all on all the uh, you know social media that I can brilliant mate well I'll catch you soon guys I hope you've enjoyed the chat with Hixie we'll be back with more strength action soon <laughs>